dance and sing. <laughs> so it's that time of year again. In the words of the song, all the leaves are brown, the sky is grey, there's a chill in the air, it's Halloween. Frankly, you can't throw a stick without hitting a vampire this year. They're everywhere. Look in the cinemas, you've got Korean vampires in Thirst, you've got American vampires in New Moon, the sequel to Twilight, you've got teenage vampires in Cirque du Freak on the bookshelves, you've got Strain on the television, True Blood just out on DVD. Everywhere you go, there are vampires. And it's raised the question, why now? Why vampires now? Why suddenly are we overrun by a glut of bloodsuckers? Three answers. First one seems a bit cheap, but probably true. Vampires are just dead easy to do, as I will demonstrate in a moment with nothing other than a bottle of tomato ketchup. Second answer, it's all to do with money. Big favourite with the sociologists, this. 1931, Dracula, very successful time of depression. Now we have a depression, all the monetary systems the same, we all want vampires all over again. Hmm, maybe, doesn't convince me. But the third answer, and probably the most likely, it's all to do with sex. The idea that vampire stories are basically to do with sex is as old as these trees. I did a documentary a while ago called Fear in the Dark in which Kim Newman, the great horror critic, said it's very important to know that Dracula was written by a man who died of syphilis because he couldn't get laid within his marriage. Now, it's probably not true, actually, but what's important is that people wanted it to be true. I remember interviewing Barbara Steele and her talking about the great lustful appeal of the vampire, looking at all those Hammer movies which are all to do with heaving bosoms and exposed necks and a dark figure laying himself down on some innocent victim. Then you fast forward to the 1990s, there was a wave of vampire movies then. We had Innocent Blood and Vampire in Brooklyn and Interview with a Vampire and Tale of a Vampire. And the great boring cliche of that period was, well, they're all to do with AIDS. They're AIDS movies because, in the end, vampire films are always about sex. And coming up to date, once again, sex is right there on the agenda. Look, for example, at first. It's the story of a priest who denies himself fleshy pleasures until he becomes a bloodsucker, and then he sinks into a degraded world of full-on sexual activity. Compare that with Twilight, which obviously is a story about abstinence. It's a story about not having sex. It's a story about falling in love with the boy who wants to pierce you but doesn't want to pierce you. Even when they're not about sex, it's all about sex. The problem with this consistency of theme is that in the end, it kind of gets a bit boring. I mean, if they're all about sex, how exciting is that? So, I want to recommend to you, this Halloween time, two vampire movies, my two favourite vampire movies, both of which, significantly, are specifically not about sex at all. And they are Guillermo del Toro's Kronos, which I've talked about before here on the Kermit Uncut site, and Thomas Alfredson's let the right one in. In the case of Kronos, it's a film about ageing and death and despair. And it's, in inverted commas, sexiest sequence is a sequence in which Federico Lupi licks a nosebleed off a tiled white bathroom floor. A sequence which was specifically designed by the director to demonstrate that there was nothing in this scene at all that was to do with lust. It was absolutely to do with ageing and death. In the case of Let the Right One In, which comes from the virtually non-existent tradition of Swedish horror, both the novelist and the director have said it's not a story about sex. It's a story about anger. It's a story about adolescent rage. It's a story in which vampirism represents the pent-up aggression of a young child who's been set upon by local bullies. It's that. That's what its coming-of-age story is, not the discovery of sexuality. So, with all this other vampire stuff going on around at the moment, check out those two movies, Kronos and Let the Right One In, which I would recommend to you wholeheartedly. Let me know also what are your favourite vampire movies and why you think that vampirism has continued to thrive. And now, because I promised I'd do this earlier on, let me show you just how easy it is to do vampires on camera. Come with me now. <laughs> You see, the thing is, nowadays vampires don't have to have all those gothic trappings. They don't need the cape, they don't need the wings, the slick back hair. They don't really even need the fangs anymore. All that's gone, it's all old hat. Nowadays it's just you need to look a bit pasty and you need to do the bloody mouth thing, which is where the ketchup comes in. So, watch this. The 10 second lesson in budget vampire on film. 